Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I'm gonna to do a lazy day pot roast. Uh, I really like pot roast, and I usually make a pot roast like probably most of you do, that is a bunch of root vegetables, some potatoes, uh, and with a brown gravy sauce. Pretty much bog standard pot roast. This one's a little bit different. It has a creamy white wine sauce that goes along with it. Um, but it is super simple, it is dump everything into the pot. I don't even brown the beef with this one. If you're someone who believes that you absolutely have to brown your beef, brown your beef. I'll wait 20 minutes while you do that. Okay, now for the rest of us, no browning required. This is gonna be in the oven for like five hours. We're gonna use some Marmite, we're gonna use beef stock, wine, there's mushrooms, tomato paste, so many things making those flavors and that long slow cook is going to give us those brown roasty flavors without having to brown the beef in the first step. So got a Dutch oven here and into the bottom I'm putting some carrots. I don't even peel my carrots. If you like to peel your carrots, peel your carrots. If you want to chop them up a little bit more, chop them up a little bit more. I don't. Um, I've got a few onions that I have just sliced roughly. Uh, you don't even have to slice them. <laughs> you just want to put in you want to peel your onions and put them in. If you want to use pearl onions, use pearl onions. Those are fantastic in here. They hold the shape a little bit. They get squishy. They taste fantastic. I have used shallots. Shallots are amazing in this. Uh, you just want kind of an oniony type flavor. To that, I'm going to put in some salt. I'm going to put in some pepper. I've got a couple of sprigs of thyme. And tomato paste, about a half a can of tomato paste. Sometimes if I don't want to save a half a can, I will put in the whole can of tomato paste. I know, it can be crazy. It can be crazy. Now I'm doing this in a Dutch oven because I really like cooking in a Dutch oven. Throw it in my oven. I work from home, I'm here all day. It's not a big deal for me. If you are someone who likes to use a crock pot, go ahead, put it in a crock pot. Because we're not browning the beef, this is the perfect uh, type of meal to cook in your crock pot. Now my next ingredient is Marmite. And I was at the bottom of this jar of Marmite, so I took some of the beef stock that we're using in the recipe, poured it in the jar, stuck it in the microwave, heated it up, gave it a really good shake so that I could get everything out of the jar. So in goes the Marmite, and then in goes the beef stock. Of course, this could be chicken stock. That works just as well in this, in this dish. Next, I've got some white wine. Um, People ask me all the time in the comments about the wine that I'm using, so I'm gonna tell you, in this case, I'm using Pinot Noir. This is a this is a blend of Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, and Pinot Blanc. It's a white wine. Um, really, if there's a white wine that you enjoy drinking, that's the wine to use in this dish. Just enough wine that it comes up to the top of the carrots and the onions. Then I'm gonna put in the beef, nestle that right in there, and then I'm gonna surround that with mushrooms. Of course, you could chop your mushrooms if you want to. I've left them whole this time. Uh, I kinda go back and forth. Sometimes I chop them, sometimes I don't. It's really up to you. So, everything's in the pot. Now, of course, you could put in, if you like parsnips, you could put in parsnips, you could put in turnip. Um, I generally, with a pot roast, don't like putting potatoes in. That's just me. I'd rather cook the potatoes on the side and then pour the sauce over them than cook them in the pot. But totally, if you want to put potatoes in here, put potatoes in here. Um, you can play with the veg any way you like. This is just something that I like. So, oven's preheated to 325. Wasn't that really simple? Nothing to it. Now, I will check this a couple of times just to make sure that the liquid hasn't evaporated. But otherwise, I'll see you in five hours. Okay, the roast is just about ready. And in order to thicken the sauce, I'm going to mix up this whipping cream with a little bit of flour. A Bermanet would work incredible in this, in this instance, which is just one-to-one um, -one flour mixed into butter. And then you mix it into the sauce in order to thicken it. Cream is gonna do pretty much the same thing as the Bermanet, um, and it's gonna give a little bit better color to the sauce, a lighter color to the sauce. If you wanted a darker colored sauce, definitely go ahead and use the butter. You're almost coming to the same point um, in terms of 
how this is going to thicken the sauce. The fat in the cream coats the outside of the flour, which means it's not going to clump when you mix it into the sauce. It's going to thicken really nicely and then the fat in the cream or the fat in the butter if you make a bourmanet is going to make a really unctuous sauce. Look at that. Great amount of color going on in there. Okay, so I'm going to take all of this out and leave behind the sauce. Okay, the sauce goes on the stove top and I'm going to bring the temperature up to a simmer. Just get some bubbles going in the bottom of the pot. Now once you get that up to a simmer, you can use a spatula or a wooden spoon to try to get some of this flavor off the side of the pot. Get as much as you can. And then just whisk in butter and whipping cream solution into the bottom of the pot. Now depending on how much liquid is in the bottom of your pot you may or may not need to use all of the cream and flour. Um, just whisk it in until it kind of reaches the thickness that you like. I know that what's in the bottom of this pot is going to be plenty of gravy for me and Julie but I also know that there's a lot of flavor in here and I could easily add another cup of beef stock um, to raise the amount of liquid and make even more gravy if I needed it. And just lay some of that gravy over top before we take it out to the table. Now, the, uh, the onions just melted right into the sauce. And <laughs> I've got a knife. You don't really need a knife because the meat just breaks apart. So, onto the plate with the meat. Hey, Glenn. Hey, hey friends. That looks pretty good. A couple of mushrooms. Oh. Oh, mushrooms. Mushrooms everywhere. I, yeah, made a mess of the counter. And Julie's favorite, cooked carrots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like raw carrots, great. But somehow, cooked carrots are not my favorite. This looks really good. Yeah, so the beef, the beef should just pull apart. It'll be like... Pretty much. Yep. Yep, I don't know, onion on my... I can't. A little bit of extra sauce on there. Oh, I couldn't even wait. <laughs> I didn't even wait. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> that works for me. There's a ton of flavor there. An absolute ton of flavor there. And I would, I mean, I kind of jokingly said if you're one of those people that absolutely has to brown beef at the beginning of every operation, give it a shot without browning it. Because the flavor is absolutely incredible. And the flavor in this sauce those will be good on potatoes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So I've got potatoes boiled up inside. Mm hmm Red wine would definitely work with this, but I think white wine brings a more balanced flavor. It allows the flavors of everything else to sort of shine through, brings the acidity that you need. Red wine might be a little so bit overpowered. So that means we've got some wine to go for we, go we, with dinner then. We do have a little bit of wine yeah. to go with dinner. Okay, so um, pot roast. This is 2022. Um, I almost had a heart attack when I saw the price of what a pot roast was today. So it's not the cheap meal anymore, but if you can find a inexpensive, tougher cut of beef, that's what goes in this pot. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.